Map fans, welcome back. Today we're looking at user profiles and plugins in QGIS, and we're using the AGS Tools plugin as an example. My colleague Richard and I are actively developing the AGS Tools plugin for QGIS, and recently we presented it at an event hosted by the Yorkshire Contaminated Land Forum. After that event, we got a few questions about installation, and so I thought I'd make a walkthrough. But first up, let's talk user profiles in QGIS. Profiles can be accessed through the settings menu. And for the longest time when I was using QGIS, I did not use profiles at all. But as BirdGIS has grown, thanks in part to you, dear viewer, I've discovered just how useful they can be. So creating a new profile couldn't be easier. All you need to do is go to the settings menu, go to user profiles and go to new profile. The new profile name, I will call this one YouTube Demo 2, second time I've done this part, and hit OK. This will fire up a new instance of QGIS and it will open with that profile you have just created, as you can see here. In the square brackets at the top, I have YouTube Demo 2. So let's make this full screen and look at how my interface has changed. Here I've got two instances open side by side. On the left hand side is the new profile that I've just opened or created, the YouTube Demo 2 profile. And on the right hand side is the profile that I was working with previously. And there are big differences between these two profiles. Possibly the most obvious thing is that the icons have shrunk. Over on the right hand side I have large icons. When I'm training people or delivering training online, um, I like to use large icons just to make sure everybody can see what's happening. On the left hand side, you can see they've reset to the normal default size. I also have fewer toolbars showing on the left hand side and on the right hand side, you can see it's quite busy. I've got advanced editing um, and some other things open as well. The left hand side has no plugins either. Um, on the right hand side, you can see here I've got Merge and Maps plugin um, activated and showing on my toolbar as well as in the processing menu, uh, but I do not have that available on the left hand side. So let's go through all the things that profiles hold. Profiles will hold all of your global settings, so that includes local, projections, authentication settings, color palettes, anything like that. We also have the GUI configuration, where your panels are, what panels are visible, what toolbars you have showing, as we saw in my side-by-side -side example. We also have plugins and their configurations stored in the profile as well, and project templates and the history of any saved projects. Processing settings will also be stored along with logs, any scripts that you have, or any models that are stored as well. And finally, we have projection information. So if you have any proj helper files or grid files in order to do datum transformations, they will be stored in your profile too. You can get all of this information as I have from the QGIS documentation if you'd like to look further into what is actually stored within a profile. Here are some of the reasons I use profiles in QGIS. If you have any different ones, please leave them in the comments below. So I provide a lot of training and when developing materials, it's really useful to be working with the default settings in QGIS. This means I can include directions on any changes to the defaults we might need to make during the course. There's also different workspaces. If I'm working on a project that requires a lot of editing or digitizing, I might have a particular GUI setup for that. So particular toolbars or plugins that I'm using. When it comes to troubleshooting, if you run into any problems with QGIS, crashing repeatedly or not behaving as you'd expect, creating a new profile can be a good first step in the troubleshooting process. It removes the possibility of plugins or settings causing the problem, and it's a bit easier than reinstalling from scratch. When it comes to plugin development, uh, it can be a good idea to start with everything at the default settings, almost like a factory reset that gives you a blank canvas to begin developing your plugin from. So there's some information on profiles in QGIS. Now I have my YouTube Demo 2 profile open at the moment, and the second part of this video is how to install plugins from a zip file. Now to do this, I'm using the example of the AGS Tools plugin that Richard and I have developed. So first things first, I need to 
get the code and here I am in GitHub and there is a link in the description below in order to get to this particular GitHub repository. So I can just click here on the code section and choose to download zip and then save that somewhere sensible. Having done that, I can go up to my plugins menu and go to manage and install plugins. And here, instead of any of the other selections, I go for install from zip and then just use the little ellipsis here and I'll go to where I saved it to, which is in my demo folder, and just choose the zip file that has come down and open that up and go for install plugin. You'll get a security warning. I can assure you that we don't have any nefarious code in our particular plugin. So I do trust this and I can hit yes. And you'll see that the plugin has installed successfully. Now, in order to find the AGS tools plugin, it is a processing plugin. So if you go to processing and toolbox, you will find now that you have AGS tools available in your processing toolbox. So as promised, here's a quick demo of the AGS tools plugin. So over here, I have AGS 2DB. And if I activate this, it's going to ask for an input file, which will be an AGS file. We can set the coordinate reference system as well and choose a location to output the database to. So this will take an AGS file. Here I've got shalt.ags and I can choose to output this to a spatial light database. I'm going to choose where to save that. Call this YouTube. OK, save that and let's hit run. And off it goes. It has finished and that has gone through the AGS data found the locations of these boreholes and brought them into our QGIS project. Now I'll just turn on OpenStreetMap here so that you can get some context as to where we are. And over in our browser, if I hit refresh here, I have a link to the database that I've just created. Using the drop down, I can see all the tables that have been brought in from the AGS data and these are all in the same database. So from there, we can start querying our data. We can build tables and table joins in order to make sure that the data is attached to these particular locations. If you'd like to join the waiting list for the course that Richard and I are putting together, then please do find the link in the description below, along with all the other links cited in today's video. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to smash like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. Happy mapping.